We're back with week four predictions. Week three was a good one. We'll jump right into week four. Alrighty. So, first game we'll talk about is UAB at South Alabama. Both teams coming off of losses. UAB is favored to win by seven and a half points. The over-under is 47 and a half points per game. Pretty even, 29 and a half to 28. UAB does allow a little bit more points per game than South Alabama does. But everything everything else is pretty much even, except South Alabama had 401 total yards of offense, and UAB has 394. So my player to watch in this game is Tyler Johnson the third UAB's quarterback against a team against South a team of South Alabama that gave up 252 yards passing. Tyler Johnson has got 66.7% completion percentage for 293 yards, three touchdowns and one interception. I think he gets to the hot start and you know really brings his team over the edge to win. UAB for me wins 34 to 27. Next game we'll talk about is Middle Tennessee State at UTSA. UTSA coming off of a win. Middle Tennessee State coming off of another loss. No spread or no over under on ESPN for this game. I mean, Middle Tennessee State is a bad football team. I'm not going to go into too much. I think particularly. UTSA is running back to Sincere McCormick, who has 48 attempts, 295 yards, 6.1 average, and one touchdown. I think he's going to control this game. I think he's going to run wild all over Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee State is a horrible football team. UTSA, though, did give up, <laughs> did give up 400, are giving up 409 yards per game. One of which game is against Stephen F. Austin, who I barely even heard of, or I forget even exists, I should say. I think UTSA wins 45-17. to Next game is Georgia Southern at Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Raging Cajuns coming off a of win against Georgia State. 34-31 in overtime. Uh, Georgia Southern coming off of a very, very unimpressive win against Campbell, which ended 27-26. to Louisiana is favored by 13.5. The over-under is 52 on this game. I'm going to go right ahead and say it again. I think Louisiana's running game is going to control this game. Their, their yards rushing per game is 179. And Georgia Southern allowed 132 against Campbell. So I think Elijah Mitchell is going to have a very high impact on this game with 24 attempts on the year, 210 yards, 8.8 .8 average, which is way above what you need, and two touchdowns. So I think Elijah Mitchell is a player to watch for this game. Louisiana wins 38-23. Next game is Georgia State at Charlotte. Anyways, Charlotte scored 20 points against Appalachian State in their first game. We know what Appalachian State is after that 17-7 loss against Marshall. So Charlotte's resume is looking even less impressive. Georgia State put up a good game against Louisiana. Louisiana coming off that win two weeks ago against Iowa State. I thought, I predicted that, you know, Louisiana would walk through Georgia State. They didn't. They put up a good fight. They lost at the end of the day, but I think Georgia State... Wins this, the player to watch is Destin Coates running back for Georgia State. And Georgia State wins 28-23. to Is Army at Cincinnati. Real quick overlook about this game. I desperately think Army needs this game. They, they need to prove themselves that they belong in the top 25 and not just because other teams are not playing because of COVID. They, they need to prove a point. They need to make... They need to, they need to ensure everyone they're back to 2018 form. They need to finally put a win against a top 25 team to be taken seriously. The spread is Cincinnati by 14 points. The over over under is 47. Army's defense obviously was is has been impressive in the first two games. Uh, 56 yards allowed rushing. 
and only really 136 allowed passing. Cincinnati's offense, man, I know it was Austin Pay or P Pay, P Pay. Hmm? They, they passed for 249 yards and ran for 276. That is a well-balanced attack. That is something you got to be worried about. One thing I've heard about and seen about Cincinnati is they're big. All of their offensive linemen, backup, and starters are all over 300 pounds. Now, I think this game is won and lost for Army in the trenches. That's what, what I have down for my player to watch. I don't have a particular player to watch. And for Army, it shouldn't be a particular player to watch. Army's offensive line versus Cincinnati's defensive line is going to tell the tale of this game. I personally think Army should... They usually defer until the second half. I think they should take the ball, try to take it down, score a touchdown, get on top of Cincinnati quick, and then control the rest of the game, how they do with their triple option attack and eat time of possession all game long. I have Army winning 24-21 with possible overtime in mind. I'm picking Army more because, one, I'll admit I can't pick against my team. I just can't. But I will say I'm mostly picking them because they need this win bad. Next game is UTEP at University of Louisiana Monroe. Last game... Louisiana Monroe is coming off of a loss, 38-17 to against Texas State. UTEP is coming off of a lackluster, impressive win against Albine Christian, 17-13. Point spread is ULM by 9.5. Over-under is 47 for this game. Both offenses are horrible. Both offenses are miserable. They're just both miserable. Now, I think the difference in this game is going to be Louisiana Monroe's quarterback, Colby Suits. Now, despite their offense being terrible, he still has a 68% completion, completion percentage. Say that five times fast. 525 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. So he's played well through two games. He's lost both of them, but he's played well. And I think that is going to be where you want to look. Pass yards allowed for UTEP is 272 yards. They played three games already. They're two and one. But I, I, think, Col I think Colby Suits is going to be the guy to watch in this game. I think ULM wins 23-13. to 13. Tulsa at o Ar Arkansas State. Let's talk about Tulsa first. They're coming off of a loss 16-7 to 7 to Oklahoma State. Usually, lately, have been giving Oklahoma State a lot of problems year before and this year. But Arkansas State is favored by two points. And the over-under is 66. Uh, yards allowed, Arkansas State has allowed a lot. Now, granted, they have played two games. They're allowing 438 yards per game. That's not very good. But... They are also going for 456 yards per game. Now, player to watch for me in this game is Jamal Jones, running back for Arkansas State. He's got 31 attempts, 159 yards, 5.1 average. Tulsa allowed 141 yards against Oklahoma State. It seems to be that is kind of Arkansas State's strong suit right now. I mean, Logan Bonner, their, their leading passer, has 60% completion, completion percentage, 337 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions, so nothing impressive there. So I think this is where they need to control the game. They need to get the run game going very quickly and early. I think they, I think Arkansas State does win 30 to 21. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a two point game, but 30, 30 to 21 is what I think it'll be. Next game is Tulane at Southern Mississippi. Oh, I got to talk about Tulane again. Okay, so the spread, is they, they have Tulane winning 30 by 3.5. The over-under is 54.5. Tulane's coming off of that miserable loss to Navy. Uh, Southern Mississippi, they're, they're coming off of a loss to 
Louisiana Tech by one point. They start 0 and 2. Tulane starts 1 and 1. I'm not going to get into stats. I'm, I'm going to give you my player to watch, which is Tim Jones, the receiver for Southern Mississippi, who's got 14 receptions, 299 yards, and two touchdowns. And I think Southern Mississippi wins this game 35 to 27. Tulane, I don't know how you don't get gassed after that left the last week. 20, you're up 24-0. Navy comes back. They beat you with seconds running off the clock. Your coach two weeks ago said that you were seeing ghosts, and now you're here. So, yeah, I'm going to say Southern Miss wins this game. I'm not going to go into that much detail about this game. And now we get to our last game of the night at 10.15 p.m. How a lot of teams aren't playing and we still have games on at 10 o'clock beats me, but it's Troy at BYU. I'm going to get on the very unpopular train right here. And I know everyone was talking about them. I am not high on BYU. Everyone's saying how good of a team they are and this and that. I'm sure they're much improved from last year. They got some good, they got good players. They played a Navy team who never hit or had live scrimmages or live practices before. They played a team that was completely unprepared. I, I, don't, I don't think... So I think BYU is on their high horse right now because of that. You know, they only gave up three points to Navy. <laughs> they only allowed 30 yards pass, and they only allowed 119 yards against Navy, which is always impressive. But again, Navy didn't hit nor a live practice or scrimmage all off season. Their BYU is favored by 14 points, the over under 61 points. Screw it. Give me Troy. Troy wins 38 to 35. I said what I said. I'm not on the BYU train. They looked impressive against the Navy team that that essentially didn't have an off season. I think the player to watch, though, is Tyler Algier, Algier, the running back for BYU. Now, he's got 14 attempts, 132 yards, 9.4 average, and two touchdowns. I think depending on what he does really determines this game. I will have some seriousness in here. Well, I, I am serious. I'm dead serious. I'm picking Troy 38-35. to That does it for this week. Like I said, some, some, some good games. I am definitely going to keep... Well, I'm obviously going to be watching the Army game. But I am definitely going to keep my eye on that Troy-BYU game. <clears throat> I'm telling you, people are not going to... If people... No, if people see this video, because I'm just starting out, BYU fans are not going to like me very much. And it's nothing against them. No, no, no. Like, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't have any, like, personal grief with BYU. I just think everyone's so quick to judge on how good they are when... Their first game is based upon a team that essentially didn't didn't practice all off season. So that is what it is. I think it's an exciting week for college football. Group of five. I think there's potentially a bunch of good games on. Again, let's see how Army does against the top twenty five team. Can they finally put a top twenty five team away? Can Troy upset BYU? I think they can. I think Troy can. And that's 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 it for uh, this week's predictions. Uh, Sunday, again, will be the recap of week four. And I'm thinking about uh, doing some other series. Uh, stay tuned for it if you are tuned. And if you're not tuned, please get tuned. Good day.